Bob Holt joining us, Arkansas Democrat Gazette sports writer extraordinaire and a good friend of halftime and joining us Thursday since we started it. Bob, appreciate you as always. How are you today? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Doing, doing good, well. man. Doing good. We did a lot of talking yesterday about Vin Scully. Uh, you grew up, I think, listening to Ernie Harwell, a uh, legendary voice of the Detroit Tigers. These were two men that were about on par. I called Vin Scully the greatest broadcaster of all time. There's a lot of people that would say Ernie Harwell might be the greatest broadcaster of all time. Maybe you're one of them. Well, he was a great one. I got to meet him one time, which was really, really cool. I was in Arlington doing a story on George Kell, who was Tiger's TV broadcaster, and I talked to Ernie Harwell about it. I think it was about 1990. It was, it was, that was awesome. But, yeah, I listened to him when I was in Michigan, and then we moved – to Wisconsin and later Missouri, and WJR, uh, kind of like a Detroit version of KMOX, the signal was just gigantic. And I actually, in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, I could get WJR in at night. Um, sometimes me and my dad would go out in the car and listen to it on the car. It was coming in better on the car than it was on the old transistor radio. But yeah, Ernie Harwell was a great, great announcer. Um, you know, he was known for... You know, somebody catch a foul ball, he said that was caught by a guy from Kalamazoo, or that was caught by a guy from Saginaw. Mm -hmm. And there were people that actually believed he knew where those people were from. He just made it up. It was kind of like, you know, a joke with the fans. And, um, but I always thought that was pretty funny. Maybe when I was a little kid, I believe he knew where they were from, too. But I always thought that was funny. People thought he actually knew where these fans were from out in the stands. But, um, and I think this is right. I think, you know, everybody talks about, um, was, was it, uh, Gus Hodges and had the call on the shot heard around the world on the Bobby Thompson home run. Uh, I think on the radio, Russ Hodges. Russ Hodges, but yeah. Ernie Har yeah, Ernie Harwell. I think had uh, he ha he either had the TV call or the radio call. Everybody's familiar with Hodges' call. Of course, you always see that with the video. But then Harwell was work. I think working for uh, Brooklyn, and he left to go somewhere. He, he I think he was with Baltimore before he was with the Tigers. And Ben Scully basically got, like, you know, filled in for, you know, replaced him in Brooklyn. So that those two have a connection besides being Hall of Fame announcers. But, yeah, I, I didn't get the MLB package this year because the Tigers are so horrible and just frustrating. But when I did get the MLB package, one thing I love to do was watch the Dodger games. I didn't really care about the Dodgers, you know, not a Dodger fan. But I just love listening to, to Vince Scully, of course, as a kid. I remember him doing all the World Series games, the games of the week with Joe Garagiola. And, but, yeah, Vince, I, I, I remember him. I think he was a game show host. Maybe I'm getting mixed up. I, he, he just did everything, you know. He, he was like the total package. He did, you know, he did golf, football. Uh, he, he was awesome. I think he did. It. I think I, I think he did a, t a game show. That's true. That's true. It's funny when you, when you look at like a guy like Vince Scully. Who's it takes two thought of as as a southern california guy and of course he lived there for most of his life but he's from new york he still had that accent for all those years ernie arwell is from the is from georgia if i remember correctly and he's interviewed as the legend in detroit mel allen longtime legendary yankees announcer he was traded from the atlanta crackers he still had that southern twang eli gold who is the voice of alabama football and a legend certainly not starting the season this year because of health issues he's a new york native sounds like it they love him in alabama Paul Eels, not from Arkansas, uh, Iowa, if I remember correctly, and didn't sound like everybody. You don't have to be from the area in order to connect with listeners. You didn't even have to sound like everybody that you're talking to. Vin Scully didn't sound necessarily like Southern Californians did, and Harwell it didn't sound like Detroiters. Yeah, it's funny. Ernie Harwell was from Georgia, and when I when I met him and talked to him, you know, I told him I was from Arkansas and doing this story on George Kell, and he said, do you know Frank Broyles? And I said, yeah, I, I know Frank Broyles. He actually had called some of Frank Broyles' high school games. Wow. Uh, down there in Decatur, <laughs> wow. Georgia, which is basically the Atlanta, greater Atlanta area. I don't know what they called it back then. but So um, well, one thing it tells you is everybody knows Frank Broyles or knew Frank Broyles. Um, but, yeah, Ernie Harwell um, from Georgia, he, he, yeah, yeah it, he actually got traded uh, for, like, a catcher or something. I'm trying to remember. It's amazing what they used to do back then with announcers. Um, I guess now they'd give them draft picks or something. But, um, yeah, Vince Scully, you know, I, I actually started following him on Twitter a few months ago, and he'd go on there once in a while and post stories and videos. And I, I guess he must have been ill, unfortunately. 
um, because he said he passed away at home. Um, So I didn't know if he had an illness or what happened. But, you know, 94 years, and he he was, um, you know, an announcer all those years. I remember being in Cooperstown a long time ago, um, and um, one of the things that's fun to do there is go in the theaters and watch, uh, like, clips. And they had this one theater. They would play, like, I think they would play entire World Series games. <laughs> like for you can go there if you wanted to and watch mm-hmm. three hours or something, probably two hours. Okay, but I, I went in there just to sort of get off my feet for fifteen twenty minutes, and they were doing like the nineteen fifty something World Series, and Ben Scully was doing it. And I remember thinking, my God, this is like nineteen fifty four or what? Fifty what? And he's doing the game, and this was probably like two thousand or something. I, I was I, I'd been covering something out there in Buffalo Track Nationals, and I did a side trip to Cooperstown when it was over. And I sort of think, I cannot believe Vince Kelly was doing this, you know, like 40 years ago. But it, he just had, he had an incredible career. I mean, he had long, he had quality and quantity of a career. Yeah, he definitely did, Bob. And that, that was some great stuff, a little trip down memory lane. Now, for the th- things that's going on, you know, today that are that are newsworthy is, um, it, what, we're going to start with basketball and then I guess we move into football camp that's going to start because I think, one thing that's a little troublesome is that Nick Smith didn't practice yesterday, uh, had his finger wrapped up. What What's the, the latest on that, and are is he going to play in Europe next week? Well, we, we don't know. And it was, Yeah, he, he, I mean, he was at practice. He dressed out. He shot on the side. He, it's his left hand. He's a righty, but he had um, – it's his um, left index finger – and uh, we asked Eric Musselman afterwards about it, and he said he'd heard it Monday – in Monday's practice, and, you know, they did MRIs and x-rays and everything, and they determined, doctors determined, medical staff, that it's a deep bone bruise. So, I mean, the thing is, you know, they're not playing Kentucky, you know, on Friday mm-hmm. on Saturday or whatever for the SEC title. So um, I'm sure they're going to be ultra careful. I'm sure he'll make the trip. And um, Eric said he was going to, uh, Nick Smith was going to be a business doctor again tomorrow on Friday, and they'd get an update. But, of course, they don't leave till Saturday, and then they play on Tuesday, and then they, I can't remember the exact day, so they play about every other day there. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's still several days that he could get to play some. But, you know, bottom line is you're not going to take it. You wouldn't take a chance with anybody, but especially with Nick Smith. I mean, you know, the number one recruit in the country or top three or four, depending, I guess, on who you, talk, you know, who rates him. But, um, so, I mean, I don't think it's anything to be worried about. It's, it's a, like I say, if this was, you know, the NCAA tournament week or something, yeah, that'd be something to be worried about. But at this point, um, you know, hey, if he's going to get hurt or if anybody's going to get hurt, good to do it now rather than later. And I guess at this point, you just have to say, Eric said he's day-to-day. So. Well, I, I wasn't able to, to make it up to Fayetteville yesterday, so I need you to be my, be my eyes. Is Did anybody jump out at you from an improvement from last week to, to this week? That that maybe wasn't very impressive or really jumped off the page to you last week, but you you saw some improvement. Uh, and it, it was a really a different kind of practice. And what, you know, last week, I guess on purpose, they did a lot of scrimmaging, and I think they sort of wanted to you know get guys dunking on video, you know, get fans to mm-hmm. be more excited than they already are. This was much more probably of a normal practice where they did a lot of station work. Um, a lot of defensive drills. Um, you know, I just like I say, I still think they look look really good. I mean, I wrote something about Ricky Council for, for today. Of course, a lot of that stuff has been gathered over the last few weeks. But um, one thing that was really interesting, you know, and we know they do these these you know put put pressure on themselves these free throw drills, and they had a deal where guys would be at different baskets spread around the court because you know. They got like one, two. They got eight, eight or something. And when you get all the all the ones on the side, and they it was the end of practice, and they had to hit like eight in a row or something. If they missed two, like let's say a guy hit one, hit one, hit one, miss, hit, miss, then everybody got down to pushups, including Eric, which goes to show you, his, you know, his surgically repaired shoulder is okay, and uh, the whole staff would come there and do pushups. And I, I wish I'd started counting because I didn't know they were going to do it for so long. And, but I remember thinking, well, gosh, I think they went down nine or ten times. And uh, I did some to Eric about them. You guys must have done 100 push-ups. And he said, well, we, somebody said we did 90. So, um, well, that was really interesting that, um, you know, and he was talking to about, hey, this is more pressure you're going to have in a game, you know. 
Um, and that, that's something they, they, they do a lot. It's not just something we get to see very often because the practices are closed. But I, I thought that was interesting. But, yeah, just another good – you know, they, they look like they're in very good shape for this time of the year. I mean, that, Eric definitely looked like he was in midseason form. He he was unhappy about someone having him go in line and run. And he was wearing his, you know, his big Padres thing. He was wearing a Padres hat and T-shirt. Not t- yeah, T-shirt for, was it Slam Diego? And he had yep. Soto. I saw that. that. I know that's his team. That's, that's hey. the team he grew up rooting for. But yeah. he's got to be feeling his oats oh, yeah. after the Soto trade now. Oh, yeah. He actually worked for the Padres when he was in college. And he played basketball at University of San Diego. And his dad was good friends with Ray Kroc, the Padres owner. So Eric had a job. Um, I don't know if you call it Mark, probably customer relations. I remember talking to him about it one time, and he said basically, you know, whatever complaints. He was like in the complaints department. He mentioned, like, people put fireworks in the toilet. They ran out of beer. <laughs> Someone's messed up with parking, whatever. Well, he was kind of running, you know, he was not running it maybe, but he was in the complaints department, so it was kind of like, hey, there's there's an issue in the bathroom. you got to go fix it. So, I mean, you talk about starting at the bottom, you know. <laughs> but here's a guy who's in college or for a major league team, you know. And he was there in the 80s when they were actually pretty good. I think he was there when they had their World Series team, where, of course, the Tigers beat. Uh, he was really impressed. You know, when Ken McReynolds was, was their center fielder, you know, from Arkansas, Eric was working for him. So, yeah, he loves baseball. He, If you are on Twitter, I think he's met half the major or not met. You know, he's really good friends with Phil Nevin, the uh, the Angels manager, and he spent time with a bunch of other managers uh, this year. If you like to go on Twitter, he's got his picture taken with, with about half of the major league managers, it seems like. Hey, Bob, we're up against it. we got to run. Appreciate you, man. Thanks, as always, for hopping on with us. Partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's Wimbledon Finals, Major League Baseball, the latest fighting news, and even next season's early NFL futures. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code, B-L-E-A-V. That's B-L-E-A-V to get the bonus and get into the action. Bet online where the game starts.